I'll invite Jonathan Barker. He's also familiar, I guess, to all of you. He's professor at uh, St. John's Institute, King's College in London. So, Jonathan, please. Um, thank you very much, Lars, um, and um, uh, welcome to this session, everyone. Um, I was asked to um, briefly, in 10, 15 minutes, uh, discuss how genetic understanding of psoriasis um, has evolved, uh, reflect on what we've learned and give you some examples of, of where, where we're at, um, and also at the very end, um, speculate on some future um, directions. So the key issue about, as Lars was mentioning, about um, uh, psoriasis is trying to work out the question, what causes psoriasis? And the, the critical epidemiological study uh, that established once and for all that, that, that there was an important inheritable component to psoriasis was conducted by um, a Danish dermatologist called Gunnar Lomholt in the Faroe Islands um, in the far north windswept seas. And um, interestingly, next year is the 60th anniversary of his seminal work, um, and there will be an IPC-sponsored meeting in the Faroe Islands to celebrate um, his work and how, how much things have advanced since, since then. So we know that there is an important heritable component to psoriasis. In fact, it's probably the most important um, issue when discussing um, who gets what causes psoriasis. Um, the other important um, advance was nothing to do with psoriasis, but it was to do with genetic methodology. I mean, in particular, the, the mapping of the human genome in draft form for the first time in the year 2000. Because as a result of that um, uh, advance, it became possible to rapidly genotype large numbers of people um, and allow you to um, answer the question of what is the genetic makeup of people with common complex uh, polygenic diseases. And so just reflecting on how we can use that information um, in a complex disease like psoriasis, we can use genetics to identify the causal biology. Uh, we know that there's this huge immunological soup going on, and the question is what's primary and what's secondary. Uh, we can use it to identify those who are susceptible um, to developing the disease, to understand the natural history of the disease, who's going to get psoriatic arthritis, who isn't, who's going to have severe disease, who isn't. Um, to try and unravel the association, the um, relationship between psoriasis and its various comorbidities, and also to stratify the disease. Is psoriasis one disease? Is it lots of different diseases? And not just in terms of the phenotype, but in terms of the response to treatment. And genetics can help us with all of this. So if one was to summarize where we are at with understanding the genetics of psoriasis um, at, uh, in 2022, this work was pub, uh, uh, presented at the SID. Um, we now know there's about 100, there are, well, exactly 109 loci um, throughout the human genome that associate with psoriasis with genome-wide significance. Um, 49 are new in 2022 compared to 2017. There's 143 independent signals um, outside um, of the MHC. As you can see from the cartoon um, on the right-hand side, where I've, uh, I've, I've taken the top 30 genetic hits, um, you can see that they're nearly all involved in the innate and adaptive um, immune responses. And indeed, um, in Ann Arbor, J.T. Elder and Alex uh, Soy have suggested that the psoriasis genome is an immunome. Um, but you can see that, there are, that it's not random um, it, pathways um, that, that the genetics is telling about. There seem to be five um, specific pathways that are important in psoriasis pathophysiology. And they are the skin barrier, type 1 interferon signaling, which I'm sure you're going to hear more about in a minute, and F-kappa B signaling, um, antigen processing and presentation, and T-cell deviation down the IL-23, um, IL-17 axis. Um, and it's no surprise, therefore, that you can see that the genetics highly supports current drug development in the disease, particularly with respect to IL-23, um, IL-17, and to some extent, TNF-alpha. Um, um, and this is important, um, that there's genetic support for the drug development, because there are many studies now, and this is just one that I'm using to illustrate, is if you have genetic association of your drug target, um, as well as uh, biological um, support, um, your chances of the drug 
reaching the market from phase one um, are doubled. So genetic support is important, and many of the big companies um, have actually changed their drug pipeline to, to, to ensure that genetics is um, taken um, into account when doing so. Um, and I thought I'd just give you two interesting examples that, that, that apply in psoriasis. Um, and the one is tyrosine kinase 2, um, a Janus kinase, um, which interestingly is the third biggest hit, genetic hit in psoriasis after the MHC, HLA-CW6, um, and the IL-23 pathway. And there is now um, a selective TIC2 inhibitor, um, which is in, in advanced clinical trials, showing efficacy, which is very similar to what we, uh, as an oral drug, with what we're seeing uh, with um, some, some of the biologics. So I think this is really very exciting. Um, and secondly, um, a story that you're probably more familiar with is the fact that it's quite clear that generalized pustular psoriasis has a different uh, genetic basis to plaque forms of the disease, um, and that in particular, there are mutations within the interleukin-36 uh, receptor antagonist. Um, and even in individuals with GPP who don't have these genetic mutations, it's quite clear that the IL-36 uh, pathway is perturbed. Um, but there is a, um, a, a, well, there at least two medicines, two biologics, which are being um, trialed um, in um, gen GPP targeting the IL-36 pathway. Um, and um, a single injection is able to clear the disease in a significant number of individuals. And indeed, they stay clear for some time. Um, and um, rather excitingly, um, not only for the company, but for, the, um, for us, uh, clinical dermatologists who are going to be treating these patients with GPP. Um, one of these drugs, spezolimab, has now been FDA approved, and I hear as of two days ago, approved in Japan um, as well. Um, we wait with bated breath for the EMA, and unfortunately the separate UK MHRA to um, approve these uh, very quickly. So that's really very exciting. So this is from gene to clinic in 11 years. Um, there are other important clinical questions that genetics can help us with. Um, and one of them is the issue um, of psoriasis and comorbidities. And strong association between two uh, morbidities does not describe cause and effect. And so the question is, what is the direction um, of causation? Um, and one of the big associations with psoriasis is uh, um, obesity. And you can use a genetic methodology called Mendelian randomization um, in the questions, please don't ask me to explain how you do Mendelian randomization because it's rather challenging. But there is a fantastic little uh, YouTube vi video from the professor of Ep uh, genetic epidemiology in Bristol, bottom right hand of the slide, which explain, explains the methodology. But anyway, this methodology has been applied to the question of what is the association between obesity and psoriasis. And what's completely clear is that obesity causes psoriasis, and psoriasis does not cause obesity. Um, and indeed, the other studies, and I think you're going to be hearing more about this in the René Terrain lecture um, tomorrow, is obesity is the second most important known determinant of disease um, after genetic heritability. Um, so genes and obesity are, are, are big deals in psoriasis causation. Um, in a couple of minutes uh, before, or three or four minutes if I've got to, to finish off, um, of course, when we talk about the genetics, uh, um, the, the elephant in the room is HLA-CW6, now called CO602, because um, we've known about this for many, many years. Um, it's by far the main genetic risk factor for psoriasis. Um, if, you, um, if, if you have a copy of, uh, uh, a copy of HLA-602, CO602, your odds ratios of developing psoriasis are up as much as 12 times. Um, so it, it's a big deal. It has a bigger genetic effect in terms of susceptibility than all the other loci com uh, combined, but it's neither necessary nor sufficient to cause the disease. And probably why people don't think about it too much at the moment is because it's not a therapeutic target. Um, and so you, you, the other biology um, it, it, it is looked at more. But it can help us potentially in the clinic going forward. Um, there is now good evidence um, that, that response to, the, to IL-23 inhibition compared with TNF inhibition um, can be predicted at least to some extent 
uh, by uh, genotyping individuals for HLA-0602. Um, and indeed, um, in the studies that, uh, that we were involved in using the British Registry, um, that, that, uh, that if you look, compare adalimumab, TNF inhibition, with ustekinumab, 12-23 inhibition, if you're HLA-CW6 negative, you have a three times more likely chance um, of achieving a PASI-90 uh, with adalimumab than you are with ustekinumab. So again, can you use this in some biomarker algorithm um, to assess um, output. Um, HLA-C0602, while it's the main Seras's genetic um, susceptibility factor, it quite clearly isn't the, the, the main susceptibility factor for psoriatic arthritis. There is no evidence of association between 0602 um, and, and psoriatic arthritis. So when people talk about psoriatic disease, just bear in mind that the genetics is completely different um, of the two disease. And I think that personally, I think that's a bit of a misnomer. And so finally, to end my talk, um, going forward, um, one of the big things that geneticists are trying to do now in common complex disease is to use all the genetic associations to see whether if you combine them together, you can make some various predictions about the disease, the natural history of the disease, the susceptibility of the disease, using it to influence uh, treatment, etc. Um, and this is a methodology called polygenic risk score. Um, a polygenic risk score has already been shown to be a benefit in the study of susceptibility to cardiovascular disease and indeed the susceptibility to inflammatory bowel disease, which is a hop, skip and a jump away from psoriasis in many ways. We know that there is data that shows that polygenic risk scores uh, can associate in psoriasis with age of onset with or without the inclusion of HLA-C. Um, and more work needs to be done to refine this and to apply it um, to other important clinical questions, um, such as risk prediction, um, 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 supporting diagnosis, um, treatment decision making, um, and indeed under, um, identifying uh, prognosis. So that's a bit of a whirlwind tour of genetics um, and psoriasis um, the, um, uh, over the last few years. Lars, thank you very much.